Hey everyone, Mike Robertson, Robertson Construction. So today I'm going to go ahead and add an additional outlet in this wall. And uh, what we'll do is we'll cut a hole open in the drywall. It'll be a remodeling box, uh, and that is a box that has flaps on it that when you cut the opening, you can slide the box in, screw these down, and they grab the back of the drywall. Uh, prior to putting that in, we'll pull the Romex back through it and then set the box in and put an outlet on it. Now this is considered that it's new, the power is already off, verified, it's maybe not even connected at the panel. Uh, this is for doing a, a new box. Uh, again, I'll show you after this, if it was already in and you were going to change a receptacle out from one you already had, what you would need to do and the steps you need to take. But for this video, brand new Romex coming in, it is not connected at the panel, this is all dead. Okay, I know I want to put the outlet right here. I've already measured up, matched the other outlets in the room, and I want to put it in this area. I know that the bottom is right here. That means I want to put it in, and I know the outlet, the box itself, when you look at the box, the box is uh, on a size. I'll show you here. When you come across, it's three and a half from this point, which is the highest point, to you need to go to the highest point on the other side, which is actually three and three and three quarters, the highest point. If you don't cut to the highest point, the box won't fit. So what I can do is if I know that this is the center that I want, this is where I'm going to put the box, and here's the center, then I'm going to go ahead and just take a little saw and cut it right here and try to hit the stud, and then I'll go ahead and draw a straight line. Okay, so I took a saw and I put it here and cut into the wall up against the stud. Just carefully, again, you don't know if there's any electrical. I know I already pushed some electrical in here and it's wound up, but you have the stud. Then what I would do is take my level and I will put it on here and just, you can take a level or a square or something just for a straight edge, okay? And then we know that I need three and three quarters. And the bottom of this was here, so we'll go up three and three quarter. We'll make a mark there. And then what I'll do is I just use my square. Okay. And then you'll want to measure <clears throat> You want to measure the box. It's two, two and five. Well, let's go with two and three eighths actually, because we don't have to be really tight. So we'll come over two and three eighths. Here. And again, I'll just use my square. Doesn't have to be perfect. That would be the cutout for the box. And I'll go ahead and cut the box. And these boxes, and the remodeling boxes, you can put them up against a stud, but you can also put them out in the middle of a wall. On the last one, you cut with a knife or push in so you don't rip the paper. So we cut this, we need to pull the wire through. So we gotta get the wire, I can see it in the back. And what we'll do is we'll get the box ready. It's gonna come through the bottom here and these have these little flaps. You'll wanna push the flap down a little bit because they have a little tab on them. Bend it so that the wire can go through. And then, Okay, and we'll put that wire in. And then you want to get these things and screw them in. One thing you need to do is make sure that the tabs have already started and they're forward of the box. If not, you'll just keep spinning the screw and it won't grab. But the little tabs that flap, they need to be forward on the box.
Okay. So that's nice and tight. And then what I usually do is I'll strip the wire. I'll just cut the sheath. Watch out for your fingers. <clears throat> I take it down a little to where I cut it. Hack it off. I still got at least six inches from there. Get the insulation off. Just be careful when you're hitting with the knife or you cut, you don't cut into the wires. This didn't cut into the wires. So now I have these nice long pigtails here. Okay. So then what I'm going to do is, I don't need that much coming out. I'll probably just go about three inches. So I'll chop off here. We're going to strip these. Gonna leave it just enough to where I can go ahead and turn these around on the screw. Okay, so now that these are done, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get into needle nose. You don't have to use a needle nose, I can use my other cutters. Some of these actually have a hole in them. You can grab this and twist it. Like that. I only make a hook. I don't go all the way around. If you come all the way around, uh, you don't need to touch itself. They just need to connect to the screw on the uh, receptacle. Okay, you have the hot side. If this is here, it's on the right for me, the gold. And then you have the uh, ground side. And then you, on the ground side, or the white, the common, you also have the ground wire. I'm gonna put the ground wire on first. And the way, if you, if you know the screws are going this way, and if you put it this way, you can pull it out, right? So you wanna turn it so that when it's on, it goes under that notch and it turns with the opening so it sucks it down. You can do it by hand or you can use one of these, just don't over torque it. And that holds it down inside. You can do a little bit more if you want. <clears throat> which I'll show here in case you don't think it's going to hold. You can grab this and just kind of cinch it down a hair more. Like that. And the reason why I put the ground on first is because I can manipulate this around. The ground wire is usually smaller than the hot and the common. So I'm going to put the common on first. It's up, again on the opposite side. And these are branched. If you see this little brass part in here, they're actually branched, which means if you put it on one, it's going to make them both hot. Sometimes you'll run these separately in case you have a light switch on one and, they, and you're not gonna have them both hot at the same time, you'd snap that off. But we're not gonna snap that little piece off, we'll leave it. So it doesn't matter whether you put it on the bottom here and you put it on the top over here or you put it on the bottom and the bottom, those are branched together. They're gonna give equal uh, electricity. So we'll put it over here, and again, it's spinning that way. So we'll slip that on. Okay, and we'll cinch it down just a little. But again, you don't have to have a bunch. It's just to keep it off the plastic and that the screw actually sets it. Now again, I didn't mention this. The reason why I'm using those is these don't come off and they have a good connection. On the backs of these, they also have where you can push in 14 gauge. This one this is 12, this is gonna work. But you can put in 14, you can push 14 here. Uh, but those can come out and they corrode and they only touch a little bit. They, they don't give a full connection sometimes and you might have a failure. So if you use the screws that are supplied on the sides, uh, that's much better and a much better connection. Um, the other thing is, if you're not going to use one, go ahead and screw
screw the other one all the way down in so it's not sitting out so you don't have uh, uh, any other wires or maybe some kind of a uh, piece of metal, something connect and actually hit it. So we'll go here on the other side, put that in. We'll cinch it down. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Now basically, that's it, other than setting this other screw, because you're not using it. And then what I like to do also, we don't have any connectors. This is the end. This is the end of the loop. It came across here, and that's the last outlet. So what I'll do is I'll put some uh, electrical tape <clears throat> around. <clears throat> right here to cover. So I'll wrap it across here. Now again, you don't have to do this. I just... I don't know. It's the way I was taught by my father. If he was still alive, he'd at least uh, like that I was paying attention. Okay, so we basically put it across, wrap it back around, just a couple, and cinch it down so it covers those. And then you're going to carefully push these inside. You don't want to put a bunch of tension on them. You kind of want to just walk them in together. Get them to the back, and then bring it like that. And then make sure your ground's on the bottom. I've seen a bunch of different things on, uh, on videos where people are having those on the top or at the bottom. But it should be on the bottom, but typically for residential. I'll screw these in. Don't sink it all the way. Again, you want to double check that this is straight. And again, we all know that this is not hot right now. There's no electricity going to it because not to the panel. So you can grab this, but if this was, if this wasn't, you'd double check and I'll go over that on the next video about checking your panel, making sure everything's off. So the reason what I'm doing is the reason why I didn't cinch this down is you can take a look at this and make sure that it's straight. Cause if not, you cinch it down. Sometimes you'll have them off to the side here or like this and you want to have it looking straight. So you'll continue putting it on. Basically that's it other than setting your cover plate, which uh, again, that's not a big deal. Hopefully you know how to put a cover plate on. It's just a single set screw. So that's how you put that in, adding a new outlet, pulling over from an old, same thing, if you pulled it over from the old one, you'd pull the old one out, run the wire to it. Now you'd have the wires coming out uh, from the old and from the new. You'd cut a pigtail, another little piece of wire for each one. You put the three of them together with a connector, typically larger side red because you're running three into it. And then uh, you'd run it over to the new one. And the pigtails that you had coming off the old one where you ran over to this new box here, you just have, again, the three pigtails. You go to the hot, the common, and to the ground side, push it back in, then you come over to your new one and put it together. And that would be the typical size of using either three 12 gauge or three 14s. Two 14s, you can use a yellow cap. Okay, so that's how you put in a brand new outlet or receptacle into a wall. Uh, if you have any questions, please make some comments and uh, I'll try to respond back as best as I can. Again, thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe. Take care.